What's up? Welcome to the channel. I'm Josh and today I'm going to be going over five different ways to make your beats more interesting. Now before we start the video, if you find any of this information helpful at all, make sure to comment and subscribe. It would mean a lot. I'm really trying to get to 100 subscribers. If not, no pressure. It's all good. But if you do, I would appreciate it. All right, to show you how to make your beats more interesting, I'm going to be using this project called TikTok Lil G Fire as Fuck Vibe Hard Kenny Beats Type Vibe. You know the deal. The first thing you want to do to make your beats more interesting is creating moments. A lot of people's beats I see are just flat. You want them to be dynamic, ebbing, flowing, moving. The first thing I would recommend doing is experimenting with impacts, risers, and uplifters. One of the things I like to do is layer impacts and risers. That's what I did right here. We have this sound. That's actually a piece of glass. Experimenting with foley, glass, stomps. Just go crazy with it and just layering these sort of impacts where the beat drops is a good idea. So we have the glass, we have that, we have this downlifter, and then we have a knife. Together that sounds like... And without it, to just loses so much of that oomph, if you know what I'm saying. So those are things you can use at the beginning of a section. But at the end of a section, things like risers or reverse vocals, reverse cymbals, anything like that can be really helpful. Check this out. That's just like a little cashmere cymbal transition. This is what it sounds like in context. Yeah. Another way to create a moment is with a break in the beat. And you can do this by just cutting out all the other instruments and adding a kick or a stomp or impacts or just having silence. It's a really good way to give a little bit of variation. And if an artist is rapping or singing over it, it'll allow, allow them to really shine. It gets that height factor. So that's what that would sound like. I just have this impact sound. Yeah, it kind of sounds weird on its own, but in the context of the track, it sounds dope. I have that sound, which I'll talk about more about later. And then I have just the same little cymbal transition. Another cool way to create texture is with a reverbed out snare or percussion sound. Usually on the two and four, it works well. Yeah. That little, just gave it a little extra texture, you know, a little extra like ear candy kind of thing. And that's what we're really looking for is just other things for your ear to kind of grab onto and be like, oh, like that was cool. I like that. Another way to create moments is using fills or percussion type sounds. So things like toms, oli, kind of glitchy type stuff. It depends on the genre you're doing. Tom sound, we got this little, almost like dubstepy kind of go, go kind of thing. And then these little scratch. Almost like a back that is the type thing, you know, the twerk life. Using things like sirens. Yeah, I usually use the first bar or the last bar to kind of switch things up and it just helps me flow into the next section better. The second thing that I like to do to make my beats more interesting is really mess with the arrangement. One of the arrangement tricks I use is varying the pocket. The pocket just kind of means what kind of groove you have. If you have like a boom, 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 and there's like the four on the floor, like house, like boom, boom, boom. What I like to do is have almost like an A and a B section. So for instance, I feel like the main kind of drop in this is this kind of tr hard trap type thing. You know, snares on the two and the four, it's just like trap. But there's this alternate section reoccurring every, I think like 16 bars. The kick pattern is completely different. It's like boom, boom, boom. You know, this is something I like to play with a lot. Sometimes I'll go from a trap beat to a four on the floor type beat to a section where it completely drops out. And so you really wanna mess with varying. If you don't do this, a lot of times I feel like beats can just sound sort of flat. You wanna give them something to look forward to or like when that section comes on, it's like, oh, like, you know, it's just sick to listen to. And the better that B section is, the more it's gonna highlight the A section and just make it hit way harder. Another thing I like to do with arrangement are these beat drops. A lot of y'all probably know this, but it's just something to keep in mind. You can do a couple different things. You could just cut the beat, that little roll, almost like a DJ kind of scratch. Like, using fills or little percussion sounds or gun sounds or other things, anything that'll help highlight that section and just kind of provide a transition to where it just hits harder. The next thing I always tell people to help make their beats more interesting is to make your sounds less stock. A good example of this is this Seda Baby sample. I think it's from the Kenny Beats pack. Shout out to Kenny Beats. So this is what it is with no effects. One, 
just like your typical club chant type thing. But what I did was put OTT on it and then I put this echo and turned up the dry wet and I filtered it a little bit. It was just like something different that my ear had like never heard before. That's what you're kind of trying to do by changing up these sounds and making them less stock is just to try to get things like you haven't heard before. And when you're trying to make things sound less stock, I would always recommend bouncing the audio because it gives you the most control. You can chop it up, you can reverse it, you can throw reverb on certain parts. These are just kind of all ideas to experiment with. You can pitch certain parts up 12, you know, having little layers that are pitched differently. These are certain things that I would recommend messing around with. Other things I would experiment with are things like OTT, distortion, throwing filters on different parts. This also helps you develop your own unique sound instead of just using other people. Like if you use a murder beat kit, but you add a little saturation to it or, you know, some distortion, things like that can really help separate you from the crowd. One of the things you can really hone in on to make less stock is the bass. And what I would do with this is provide layers to your bass. So let's say you have an 808, mess with either ambience sounds or percussion textures or distorted pitched up type of sounds and layer that over your bass to make an entirely unique sound. Let me show you what I did with this particular song. Without this sound, we just have this 808. No, good sounding 808, but I think we could make it more interesting. So what I did was layer it. Out. This is just another bass shot that I found on Splice. I pitched it up three to match the key of the song. See, without it, it just loses, to me at least, that extra life. It just sounds more interesting. Like, oh, like, wow, I haven't heard an 808 or bass kind of like that. In other kind of tracks, I would take this bass and make it only play when the bass hits. So that's something to keep in mind that you can mess with. Now, the fourth way to make your beats more interesting is ambient. And there are a couple different things that I mean by this. I always find like things like people talking very quietly, nature, seagulls, campfires, Mumbai sessions, all sorts of things like that. This especially works well with really simple beats where there's a lot of space. This kind of just provides almost like a white noise kind of background and just like fills up that space and makes it sound a little less stock. Here's without it. And here's with it. Now you gotta really listen, but it kind of is more of a feeling thing. Kind of like hear that background ambience just providing a little it's more like a live to me more organic so that's something to experiment with another thing to experiment with is actual ambience or drone tones and there are a couple of different ways to do this but if you're just starting out i'd recommend getting maybe on splice or i think cymatic has some free ones just things like this if it's sounding terrible it's probably out of key here's an example of what i would do in this particular beat if i was using a droning ambience type tone Oh yeah. Now this is where you could experiment and pitch, like right here. Woo! And number five of how to make your tracks more interesting is automation. If you don't know what automation is, automation is basically changing certain parameters to move over time. And what this is doing is giving your track more life. No one wants things that are just the same all the time and bored. You want a little variation. So some common ways to do that that I often see are things like filters, filtering your beats using low pass filters uh, like that. You could use a high pass filter. You could use a combination of both things like RC20. Uh, this kind of gives you the, like, that telephone type effect and uh, you could throw distortion on it. And so the cool thing about this is you could do these just for certain sections of your beat, like your intro could be that. And so, you know, you just mess with the knobs or whatever plugin you're using just to make it a little more different. And so something like right here, you could automate these parameters, for instance, and Ableton, you just click up here to show automation and then you just move whatever parameter and you see it starts moving. So you could make this like a little intro part and then automate. And so you see what's happening right here is this is moving. It's kind of opening up. And so you could do that for certain sections to make things more interesting. And once again, you could you could go crazy. You could automate that. You could automate the distortion. Uh, something else I also see people doing uh, is using automating the width of the track. So let's say like for the intro, you want it to be dead in the center. And then right when it hits, it kind of, you know, flies into both your left and right you know, ear to get this really wide type of sound that just like hits you. You could do that on here. You could also use a utility plugin. If you don't have RC20, what you would do is you just go here, show automation. 
Maybe so it's not so drastic, make it like 15%, something like that. That's a certain technique you can use to make your drops really hit is to automate that width to where it's not 100% until the drop hits. You can also automate certain sections, like just the game. You could turn down certain sections to kind of make it flow. Like if a band was playing, you'd have, like in the hook, you're just like playing really hard and then in the next section, you like kind of dial back a little bit. And so you can kind of replicate this with automation, automating volumes of different sections or uh, certain instruments, things like that. And that's another really good way to make your beats more interesting. Appreciate you guys for watching today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something. If you want to see more of this kind of content, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to like to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. In the meantime, go make some dope music. Enjoy your friends, enjoy your family, and uh, I'll see you soon. Have a good one.